Hey, hi, hello, hello, it's Rebecca Marie and welcome to the Align and Sunshine Club. It can be a lonely journey leveling up and I'm here to go through it with you. I'm a 21 year old navigating life as a young founder with big dreams, personality, and the hope of inspiring more people to take on the challenge of finding themselves, their happiness, and alignment with their best self. I'm all about showing up as the person you want to be. So stick around if this is a bit of you and prepare to feel like sunshine. Hey, hi, hello, hello, it's Rebecca Murray and welcome back to another episode of the Align and Sunshine Club podcast. So excited to have you back here today and we're going to be talking all about my sustainable fashion journey. This isn't really one of those self-development topics that we have been covering, um, but I'm really excited to get into it nonetheless because I feel like it's a really big part of who I am as a person and also it got me where I am now because I really started my journey on social media and content creating around sustainable fashion. So without it, I wouldn't have ended up here creating all of this other content for you guys on, in this new niche. Um, I get asked about it all the time. Um, and as this is quite a personal podcast, I'm really unpacking who I am and my experiences in, in these different episodes. I thought it was kind of cool just to sit down and do an episode about this. It's super lighthearted one fun one um hopefully it answers a few of your questions and hopefully it will inspire some of you guys to shop more sustainably if you're not already um i think i really proved that you can um have cool clothes and have them be secondhand and i really want to pass it across to you guys because even though it isn't my main passion or the main thing i post anymore it's still a really really big part of me and something that i really heavily endorse and now spring is coming, I'm going to get back into posting more outfits. Um, so yeah, let's just get on into the episode, I think. All things my sustainable fashion journey. Um, it pretty much started with, I used to buy too many clothes. I was going to the mall after school um, and I'd go to the sales racks in all of the fast fashion stores, Cotton On and Glassons at the Albany like mega center mall. And I was buying way too many clothes. Um, and I was just trying to build my wardrobe and I went to a school that was mufti. I went to a school that was mufti year 11 to 13. And so I had to wear a lot more clothes and I was really just trying to find myself in my clothes. And also at that stage in my life, I was trying to fit in. Um, and so I would constantly be trying to just like buy things that would make me fit in better, which is disgusting now I think about it. But that's where I was in my life back then. And I kind of just realized that I was buying too many there were some things I wouldn't even wear because they were from the sales section and I thought they looked kind of cute and then they just sit in my closet and they just wouldn't get worn and I was just buying things for the sake of like filling a void and I was buying them because they kind of look cute and they were cheap it was really bad and it is the fast fashion mentality you buy things because they're on sale or they're only ten dollars and you can do that even if you don't wear it it's only ten dollars and it kind of all hit me and I was like, this is stupid. And so I got into trade me and I would trade me like my own clothes. So the things that I wasn't selling and I started buying some more stuff for myself on there as well. Um, and eventually I got hooked and I realized that you could buy anything, any trend or anything comes back around onto trade me. And so I really just started with only trade me as the place that I would buy my clothes. And then I decided to commit to no new clothes, just full stop. I was just going to cut it off. I didn't have a timeline for when I wanted this to be over, um, but I decided that I'd only buy them from secondhand like thrift stores or secondhand platforms. And so, as I said, I was just using Trade Me at the beginning and I'd go to thrift stores and then I'd start going to thrift stores after school instead. Uh, and you can get way more unique pieces. You can find things that were trendy that people have got rid of because that's the whole thing, right? Like the fast fashion is pumping out new styles every day, every second. There is hundreds of new things going up every day and you can get brainwashed into thinking that you need them because of the marketing and the push on like, they just make you feel like it's urgent. But the truth is because they're being pumped out so often and so many people are buying them, People don't actually want them. These things don't fit into everybody's styles. They don't suit everybody. And you've just been brainwashed into thinking that you need them. And so they more often than not end up in the thrift store or online being resold. And so I think it's important to know that you can find those trends as well. Like if you wanted a trendy piece, you can find it. But you also can find some staples that relate to you more as a person. And so I started doing that. I got really into it and I loved it. 
and kind of got got hooked on that and as I said I was reselling as well and so I would start buying things that I could resell and made a bit of bank off of that a bit of a I think that was one of my first ever side hustles just did that through high school and I kind of always do that I still do that now with my Depop um and then I found out about Depop <laughs> and Depop was I found out about Depop through I think Emma Chamberlain when she was like in her peak when we were at high school and I mean honestly she's always peaking isn't she she's absolutely finessing that I think I phrased that wrong I mean like when she was really blowing up and and she kind of just first blew up um was when I was in high school and she was talking about Depop and it hadn't really blown up in New Zealand yet and so when I started taking reselling seriously I decided to build a Depop account because I knew eventually it would kick off in New Zealand because it was growing so quick everywhere else and I was right I think I have like a thousand or something followers on Depop now I haven't pushed on it in a while but you can grow quite a good following for a store and like build that community um on there and so yeah I started using Depop to buy and to sell and obviously I was using Trade Me and the thrift stores and then I started using Facebook Marketplace a little bit and it was all about like finding stuff for myself but also knowing that I'm getting things at such a good price that I could resell them to someone else if they didn't suit me 100%. Um, yeah, so it was really just like shifting that mentality in my brain. I was like, you can actually get whatever you want in the store or whatever. Like most brands, people are selling them because as I said, it's fast fashion. They don't actually want it or they have too much. They've overconsumed and now they're selling it. So more often than not, I can get a piece that I wanted. Or like when I first started not buying brand new in the store, my friends were still going to the mall after school. So I'd go with them because like that's, we would do that. And I would see something I wanted and I would try it on, figure out what size I am and then wait. I'd wait like two, three months and I'd be able to find that same piece in a different colorway or literally the same colorway. Um, maybe even brand new with tags on a secondhand platform. And that's how quick the cycle is. I just learned that anything I actually wanted, I could get. And so now I have, like, I just remember there was this dress. It was like a wrap dress from Glassons, like a blue floral wrap dress. And I saw it in the store and I was like, oh my gosh, that has my heart. And at the same day in Glassons, there was this white um, puff sleeve wrap top and it's got like a print on the, um, on the fabric. Like it's really pretty. And I was like, oh my God, I need that. And that one was also like, that was like a need. I was like, oh my God, I need this. Wouldn't even let myself try them on because I was like, no, I know I'll just be like a six or an eight. Like I know that I can find this or like, yeah. And eventually <laughs> they came up on my second hand platform. And to this day, that white top is still one of my most worn tops. And I now have it in black and pink because I got them second hand. And brand new, they it would have been like a $50, $40 top. And I think I got it for like $12 or like 15 including shipping. And that just blows my mind because like it's one of my most worn things. And I, it's, but you know, it just, it all comes back around. And so I'm saving a lot of money. I also spend a lot on these secondhand platforms, but as I said, I started um, content creating. And so I had to like have the new clothes to show what you could get. Um, so it's definitely slowed down a little bit. Now I'm a little bit into, um, not even a little bit, a lot a bit into collecting secondhand gym gear um yeah <laughs> so anyways decided to only buy secondhand this is actually my fifth year of only buying secondhand uh which is really really interesting and shows that it's definitely possible because i love my clothes like just go have a little look on my instagram if you don't believe me that everything is secondhand like everything is secondhand um, and I love building outfits through thrifted clothes, even if they are fast fashion, trendy pieces. I know that I really like them because I still wanted them when they came back around or I fell in love with them through secondhand photos, um, rather than shopping on those, on the fast fashion sites or in the stores. Um, yeah, so this is my fifth year, but I do have a couple of exceptions. I buy like my undies and my socks brand new. Um, I've started, I can buy bras in the thrift store, um, but like just undies and socks, I feel like you wear them every day. So I might as well get some fresh ones. Um, that's an exception. And then also I actually bought a pair of heels when I finished 75 Heart as like a present for myself um, that are fast fashion, they're from Novo. But, 
I love them and I wanted them for a really long time. And I know that I'm, they're going to be like a staple heel in my wardrobe moving forwards. And it makes me feel kind of bad because it is fast fashion. But also I need to remind myself that I have done five years without consuming anything brand new from the store. And so one thing isn't going to abolish all of the progress that I've made um, in having a sustainable wardrobe. And so I think it's important to know that you can have balance. Like heels can be quite hard to find and like buying them secondhand. I've bought a few, but then they're never like the perfect fit because you can't go and try them on. And so it's always like a bit risky because I feel like I'm like a seven or an eight. So then I could be like a seven and a half. And yeah, these ones are just perfect and I do love them. So that's just like, let me be honest with you there. I have bought one thing. Um, yeah. And I think shoes are also like, I have bought the Converse I wear right now, my loafers, my every shoe I've got in the last five years was secondhand my Jordans they were all secondhand um some of them are secondhand with tags like it's like someone got them as a gift and then they uh sell them because they're not the size or they don't want them and they can't return them because it was a gift and then you get like I got this pair of running shoes that were meant to be $190 running shoes for $60 dollars and they're nikes and they're so good and i still have them i wear them all the time um but my converse are breaking now and so obviously i'll go back and i'll look on trade me and see if anyone's selling any of my size um but because i wear them every single day to the gym i think i am going to replace them with some brand new gym shoes because i do wear them every day and they'll mold my feet and it's just comfier um so that's like another small exception but it's like i know that i will wear them every day and it's not, I'm not just buying them because they're a trend. I'm not buying them straight off the bat. I've been thinking about it for weeks. And I think that's also where it comes into it is with the finding things on a platform or knowing that you can find what you want. You have to be patient. You have to wait your turn for it to come up on the platform and you can find it. Like there was a top that I really wanted and I just like kept manifesting it, kept looking it up every single day. Eventually someone was telling it. I negotiated it with the seller and then someone else bought it from under me and I was so upset so then I waited another three months and eventually I found it again and now I have two different colors of it for cheaper but I'm obsessed with it because I know that I've wanted it for that long so if I want it for that long it's not just a short thing it's something I genuinely want to style in my wardrobe I know multiple ways I'm going to bring it into my closet and it's worth it and so it's yeah it's just really good for your patience is like trying to find these things and waiting and the patience means that you know that when you do get your hands on this piece you are genuinely going to love it and so I think that's quite important is like not getting hooked into those trends and the marketing and the fast fashion like fast fashion is so good at brainwashing you like it's like oh you really do need a pair of um, I don't know parachute pants it's like so many people have bought parachute pants and they don't suit them but they were cheap enough that people aren't that bothered and that blows my mind because even then, it's still a lot of money. Like, you could get those secondhand because, once again, everyone's selling them because it was a trend and they were brainwashed. So, get on these secondhand platforms. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I think that's just such a main point is you don't need anything that urgently, so you can wait for it. Like, nothing is that urgent. Um, yeah. Everything can be found. If you really want something, you can find it. I have a whole video on my YouTube. So like, if you guys want to get more into this whole sustainable fashion thing, my content, obviously, when I first moved over to socials, was all about being a sustainable fashion content creator. And I would post styled photos. I'd post reels. I partnered with a couple of sustainable brands, um, which is so great. And I love that. And I love endorsing a sustainable lifestyle. And I feel like now I've shifted more to like a sustainable, just sustainable everything, like a sustainable as in not only eco-friendly, but also like how to live your life sustainably and how to manage your time and everything like to live your best life sustainably. Um, so I think that's where we're kind of going now. So we're still on that sustainable track. It's just slightly different to where I was when I started. And yeah, so like if you guys want more of this stuff, like literally scroll down my Instagram a bit. It's on there. My TikTok has been self-development for a while, but if you scroll back far enough, there's so many hauls and like um, what I found on Trade Me, how I found it on Trade Me. And then also the most important thing is that my YouTube was very dedicated to sustainable fashion. And there are hauls, there are like, there's a video that has gone 
it's it's got a decent chunk of views and helped a lot of people about um how to use trade me and how to maximize the search like our uh, search engine on there and all of the like categorizing and just like different things you can search by to maximize trade me for you and to help you find the items that you want the most and so definitely give that a watch if you are interested let me know if you have any questions on that as well like i'm so happy to film like a more updated one or any extra tips you guys are looking for could even do the same thing for depop um but this is something that i have obviously had user experience in and really want to make it more accessible for you guys because so many people like as i'm saying you can literally find any piece that you want on there there's so many clothes going up every day that you can find it and i think some people are like oh rebecca that's really cool that you do that's really cool that you dress like that and people are like oh teach me how to get the deals teach me how to get the deals and it's like well if you're not willing to give up that little bit of time to look on these platforms then i can't help you can i like people are always saying that but once again it's like are you saying that because you genuinely want to start shopping sustainably you genuinely want to be getting these amazing deals or are you saying that because it makes you feel better like makes you feel better that you're trying to shop sustainably but you're not are you because you're just saying that you want to and you're not putting in any of the action to actually change your habits or change anything like i just decided one day i was like okay this is bad fast fashion is bad for the environment it's bad for the people that make them and uh, my, uh, it's just not a good thing and so i decided to change my habits and i did and you have to hold yourself accountable and it's not that hard to swap and i do know that i'm saying this as a like there's it's very easy to find um size eight clothing and i am very lucky to be in that in the size range that is often resold and i do understand that it is harder to sustainably shop for like plus size clothing or larger sizes and or even petite petite sizes um so as much as i'm saying that <laughs> um I would love to be able to i'll find out some more info about that because it would be really cool to have more tips on how you can kind of like thrift and shop more sustainably in those more difficult to find sizes so i know i'm saying this as a woman who has access um but a lot of you a lot of the people i'm talking about are friends in my life who also would be able to find their sizes in this and then i have some friends oh my gosh i have some friends who are like um i have a few plus size creator friends who find these amazing sustainable fits and it's just amazing so like if they can do it you can do it and yeah i'm here to help you with that and i'm excited because i'm hoping that this is just like a bit of a reality check i'm hoping this is a bit of like a um, reality check but what's the what's the word it's like a pep talk towards sustainable clothes like i love these podcasts because i feel like i'm just speaking my mind at you and i'm really hoping that these resonate with some people because i often am i'm telling people um my thoughts and people don't listen people don't listen they're like oh Rebecca give me advice I give them the advice and then nothing changes and so that's kind of why I did the podcast is I was like so many people ask me how I curated such a great wardrobe or how I find all these amazing pieces and I tell them and then they don't do anything about it and I'm just giving them this advice and they're still going to the fast fashion stores so I'm hoping that through this podcast it can resonate with a few of you and you're now like, okay, it's actually not as hard. You just got to change your habits. It's about holding yourself accountable. Hold yourself accountable. And the same question that I keep bringing up of who do you want to be showing up as? Like you want to show up as the best version of yourself and you want to be representing your future version of yourself. So for me, I was like, I don't want to be somebody that supports these fast fashion brands when they're being so bad for their people, they're being so bad for the planet. And I don't have to. And so I took a step back from that. And now I know moving forwards, my next step will be to move completely away from fast fashion brands, like completely, and only buy secondhand sustainable brands or straight from sustainable, ethically sourced, um, hopefully woman-owned brands. Um, but that's the next step. And so I've done what I can do right now where I am in my life. And it's affordable to shop secondhand. I get really cute clothes. I'm dressing as the best version of myself and I'm showing up as her, someone who doesn't want to support that toxic, toxic industry. And so I think, yeah, just remember that. Like, 
when you're looking at this, like take that extra time to look on Trade Me. You want a little black vest top? Go find a little black vest top. And if there's not one there right now, check it every day. Check it every three days. Check it once a week and eventually you will find it. And I think, yeah, it's just so important. And this is really, this is my sustainable fashion journey. And I really hope that this has helped inspire some of you guys to want to dress more sustainably or secondhand. And there's nothing wrong with secondhand clothes. Like, as I said, I love collecting gym gear right now. And the craziest thing about that is that I now have a gym wardrobe, the equivalent of thousands of dollars. Like, there is thousands of dollars worth of gym gear there. But I've only spent like a couple hundred dollars on it. And once again, I use it every day. You just wash it. You just wash it and it's fine. Or deep soak it if you feel even less uncomfortable in it. But sometimes things come with tags. Sometimes you don't even know things are coming with tags and they do come with tags. And that's such a fun surprise. And so yeah, any trend that you do want, anything you want in your wardrobe, you can find. All the trends are coming out so quick. Helps you with your patience. Helps you dress as your truest self. And the way you're going to do this is you're going to hold yourself accountable. You're going to start bringing this into your life as a habit um and you want to be showing up as that that future version of yourself so if you want to be someone that's helping the planet to be a better place ditching fast fashion is a really great place to start okay now i feel like i've rubbed all of that out at you um that is my sustainable fashion journey that is the process i've gone through to change my closet this way um <laughs> i'm really excited that i've got to talk to you guys about this i get really passionate about it if you can't tell. Um, but I hope you have a great week and I'll be back next week with another episode. Bye. I love you. Oh my God. I get so passionate about this. Thanks so much for listening. You're now part of the club and I love having you here. Make sure to check out our socials at Align and Sunshine Club or mine at It's Rebecca Marie. And I'll see you next week for the next episode. Keep showing up as your best self, you fabulous ray of sunshine. Love you.